Welcome to the next episode of the Austin Bar Association's Council of Firsts. I'm your host, Amanda Arriaga, First Latina Bar President. In today's episode, we're doing something a little bit different. We've partnered with the National Conference for Bar Presidents to do a series of interviews with bar leaders from around the country here in Louisville, Kentucky. So I'm happy to introduce you to all of these leaders that you might not know because they're not from Austin. Today, we talk to Glenda Freeman, a diversity scholar for the National Conference of Bar Presidents and the past president of the Alabama Lawyers Association. She also serves as chair of panel four on the character and fitness committee of the Alabama State Bar. Glenda is a senior staff attorney at the Legal Aid Society of Birmingham. She is a graduate of Miles College and Miles Law School. She has been a true community leader as a former board member of Youth Tower and the Western Area YMCA, president of the Miles Law School Alumni Association, and a Silver Life member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I'm happy to have with us today, Glenda Freeman. Thank you for being with us today, Glenda. I want to start at the beginning. Why did you want to be a lawyer? I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, started out very young. Grew up watching Perry Mason with my dad. Um, and just not seeing enough um, people of color in the legal profession. And just the strong desire to help people, um, not just people of color, but people that really, really need good representation, but can't afford it. So that was why my motivation, um, pursuing the legal profession. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So why was it important, now you're a fancy lawyer, <laughs> to become president of the Alabama Lawyers Association? I actually had a vision for the Alabama Lawyers Association. Um, and it's, it's, it's not ironic, but at the time I became president, the Alabama State Bar had a female president as well. And we actually had the same vision, even though we only knew each other in passing, but her vision was to bring awareness to wellness um, for the profession, mental, physical. That was something that she wanted to do. It was a passion of hers as well as mine. And so we were on the same track, didn't even know it until we both became president of our different organizations. And so during my administration, uh, which started in um, the fall with well, the summer of 2019 and we ran into the pandemic, but we did get a chance to do the health fair. And if we did it in conjunction with, um, the black nurses association, as well as, um, we partnered with miles college, one of the HBCUs in the state of Alabama. And so it was great. We had hands-on experience as to, um, how to do CPR and, and all of that. We did learn how to de-stress. Even when you don't have time to go to the gym, there are certain exercises you could do in your office, even sitting at your desk. Mm -hmm. So it was just amazing. Um, some of the things that they brought to us on how we can we can de-stress because this is a very stressful um, profession. And also, you know, suicide was up. We had one attorney in great shape running, you know, doing mm -hmm. his morning job and he fell dead. So that was alarming and it got, it got everybody's attention because he was a young man, mm -hmm. you know? And so um, that, was, that was my desire, that was my vision, was to bring awareness, a wellness uh, to the profession. And we did that. We actually had two uh, health fairs, one during the um, year before I took office and then one during the year of my office. Well, and it's interesting because more and more it seems like wellness has sort of been naturally added to DEI. Mm -hmm. Because it makes a lot of sense that mm -hmm. wellness is a part of that, as is belonging. Um, so in all of your experience, do you think the legal community is on the right track to being able to improve diversity, equity, inclusion, and wellness? I think so. And I say that because we're talking about it. And this organization is talking about it. You have other organizations talking about it. And then you have corporations, um, big businesses, and law firms that are now talking about it and putting it to action and they're bringing about changes, you know, in their organizations, you know, trying to make it better, trying to improve. So they're listening. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the best thing. Uh, they're listening. We're talking about it and big companies and corporations are listening. So I think we are on the right track. Well, and it's interesting because folks had been talking about it years ago, but mm -hmm. we're talking about it and doing things. We're doing things now. I think mm -hmm. because since everyone is talking about it, mm -hmm. now the big businesses have to react, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is great. Which is great. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about NCBP. You're one of our diversity fellows. Yeah. What does NCBP mean to you and why did you want to be a part of it? Um, NCBP 
means a lot, actually, because what it does is bring the best of the best together. And when you have your greatest minds together, you have iron sharpening iron. So you're taking great leaders and making them better. So that's what I love about the organization. And even though I'm fairly new to NCBP, I came in working. And if anyone knows your name, they're going to volunteer you for something. And I like that because I like working. But when people, you know, see you working and you don't mind working and they like, oh, okay, so she's pretty good. So they bring you in. And so I like that about that because it's building my skills that I can take back not only to ALA, but other organizations that I'm a part of. So it makes you a stronger leader. So. Well, I think if we have a hashtag for your episode, it's going to be iron sharpening iron. I like that a lot. <laughs> I like that too. I like that a lot. What advice would you give to lawyers who want to follow in your footsteps? I would say learn as much as you can about the organization that you want to be a part of and you want to lead. Associate yourself with a very good, strong leader and learn how to listen. I think listening is, is, very, is key to being a strong leader. And also, we need to know how to follow. You got to know how to follow. If you can be a good follower, you will be a great leader. But learn how to listen, associate with a strong leader, and learn as much as you can from that leader, as well as the organization that you're trying to be a part of. Well, Glenda, I feel like you've had the easiest soundbite tips in a short amount of time, and everyone is going to be able to learn from you about how to be a leader and how iron needs to help sharpen iron. Yes. Thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome. Thank you.